Geeky Ranjit. We have Abhishek from youtube.com slash getmeapp and we have Pradeep Nila here who is the editor of Gizmo Report. Thank the whole you. episode is set up into three different sections and we are going to go through one by one. So let us just get a quick introduction of all of these three guys. Hi, this is uh, Ranjit, uh, and you know me. Uh, we were posting uh, the earlier Hangouts on my channel, and uh, you can find me on youtube.com slash Geeky Ranjit. Hi, guys. This is Pradeep Mila here from AndroidAdvices.com. You can find me here on AndroidAdvices.com and few of the other sites of Advices Media. Uh, yeah, hi, guys. This is Abhishek from Gadgetsuit.com, and I run this YouTube channel called youtube.com slash Media. And that's it. Thank you. So the first section is actually about different opinions around four different questions. The second one is around user questions. questions. So let's start off with the first set of topics. You can also start posting your questions here. Like you can start asking your questions using the comment section below this video. And we'll try to answer them if we have got the right time for that. The first question is around thoughts on the new Apple iOS 7. So what are your thoughts, guys? The new iOS 7 is actually very good in terms of flat UI. Like It is very different from the current ecosystem of various services across the board. Like if you take the BBOS or the Windows Phone OS, 8 OS, or the Android OS. If you compare all these OSs and then with iOS 7, obviously iOS 7 as of now stands out for a simple reason because it's going back to the past and not uh, to the future with the adoption of flat UI. And I guess it is a future even Android is thinking of. I actually did not uh, frankly like uh, iOS 7 and uh, I was expecting actually a lot more because if uh, you have been following iOS, it's been stale. It's been the same yeah. look and feel from past uh, long time. Mm. And uh, I thought they will introduce some new elements. But it's just mostly, what do you say, UI changes. And f frankly, uh, Pradeep, you're liking the flat UI, but I just <laughs> hate it. And the choice of colors and icons, yuck. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I guess, see, it's a contrary thought. Probably, again, it depends upon user to user. But in terms of me, like Apple has been doing this in the last quite a few years, and obviously it's a con it's a radical change if you compare it with all other OSs of uh, I iOS from Apple. So as far as I think, it's my personal choice again. It may differ from people to people. So so it's something different, something new, and something very bold option from Apple. So Abhishek, you are a guest on this hangout. What are your thoughts on this? Uh, as for me, I do not like the look and feel of the new iOS seven. Especially the color scheme is kind of very flat and very dull. Uh, I would say the current iOS as of now, especially as far as the color scheme is concerned, it is perfect, as for me at least. Uh, when it comes to the features, I do see some new features in the new iOS 7, which I find very good, especially the control center, which was kind of missing and it was not properly accessible previously uh, in the previous iOS version. So there are some good features which I notice in new iOS 7, but as far as colors are concerned, uh, it is not that good as per me. And when it comes to the accessibility option, when it comes to uh, using the UI, the simplicity of the UI, I think that they are going too simplistic. Like they're becoming much more simple than they need to be. Right now, the iOS is as simple as it can be uh, for any user out there. They can understand the UI properly. There is no problem in accessing any section of the iOS if you are in the settings or even if you are in any application. So uh, that is my opinion about that. So overall, it seems like a mixed response towards the new iOS 7 update. Now let's go to the next question, which is a very interesting question here, which is around the thoughts on the new Samsung Galaxy S4 Active and the new Samsung Galaxy S4 Zoom, which was unveiled or yesterday in the Samsung Premier event. So what are your thoughts on these guys? Uh, I think so. The uh, the one is with the camera. I think so. The active. zoom is the camera. I would so say... Let's start off with the active part, the Galaxy S4 active. Active is the rugged part. I would say that uh, because Sony had some success with the Xperia Z, that's why Samsung wanted to produce one unit. That's a rugged, or what do you say, waterproof one. And I'm actually not very sure if uh, Samsung India is going to introduce this model in India. Uh, I'm not very clear about that. Uh, 
I am not a big fan of these rugged phones, but yeah, it can be a great option for some people who would like to have a rugged phone. And in Samsung's lineup, as of now, we don't have many options. So at least it's a bit different from uh, the other phones that Samsung is producing. And so they already launched around two to three different models earlier, but they were not in the Galaxy series. So this is uh, the first Galaxy smartphone, which is the rugged model. And I would personally go for this smartphone because I was actually inclined towards the Samsung uh, Sony Xperia Z because of the waterproofing feature and now if the S4 comes with the, this feature I would obviously go for that I would obviously sell off this basic uh, Galaxy S4 and opt for the active version and it's a little bit different also in the looks we are bored okay. with the same look with the Samsung phones yeah the, the complaints around the looks can be solved here because we get a new look in this case yeah that's true even like for people who are actually looking for waterproof phones with IP57 or IP67 certification, there are quite a few manufacturers like Panasonic, X Sony Xperia with its Xperia Z lineup. Now Samsung too has an answer for it with the arrival of S4 active. So it will be very interesting to see, it will be very interesting to see on how it will be panning out for Samsung at this point of stage. So what are your thoughts on this Abhishek? Uh, I would say I like the Samsung S4 active. But when it comes to the use case scenario, when it comes to recognizing the users who would like to buy an S4, I do not see much larger audience in terms of numbers. So I'm not sure whether Samsung is going to come up with this phone here in India. And if I actually tell you my thoughts about Samsung S4 Zoom, I would say that uh, think like just looking at the device, if the device is not going to be heavy after embedding that kind of camera lens uh, into that device, and again, to be a phone as well as a kind of a proper point and shoot camera. If it can actually play both of these roles properly, I'm actually pretty doubtful about it. So again, if, if, if it can actually play both of these roles and it is going to be heavy, it does not solve the purpose. And if it can actually play both of these roles and it is moderate in terms of the weight, then I would say that is uh, one good thing which will come from Samsung. Exactly. If it's more like the Nokia's Puri smartphone, if it's like so bulky like that, then there are very less chances for the Galaxy S4 Zoom. And again, we also had seen the failure of the Galaxy camera. The main yeah. reason was it had a large touch screen and came with a very bulky form factor. So if Samsung would work on that and bring it in a very lighter edition with the Zoom camera, then yes, we can see huge success in that. Amit, what I feel here is all these, this specifically the zoom device or whatever, first it's a camera, then it's, it's a phone. So audience should keep that into mind. It's primarily first a camera, secondary it's a smartphone. So if the audience is very clear about that, then they'll be happy with it because obviously it has an optical zoom in, that's why it will be bulky. True. Yeah, that's true. Even it comes with many HD, uh, DSLR capabilities, like many photo edits or many many effects which are otherwise not possible in normal cameras. Samsung has induced all these features into it, and also it's a perfect uh, successor of Galaxy camera. That's what I feel. Right. Yeah, I, I feel that Galaxy camera should have been the this yeah. thing. It was too bulky. <laughs> kind of a Galaxy camera too, in the form of yeah, an. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> So now uh, we feel that again there's a mixed response in this case also because we uh, personally I would always go for the Samsung Galaxy S4 Active while most of you don't agree with that you feel that that's another product which Samsung has just introduced it but I feel that Samsung has always been introducing different products and have been creating their own category like Note hack, Note can be one of the biggest yeah. examples. Yeah, yeah. Samsung has always been uh, like a company which tries to even replicate what other companies does like so they didn't have a waterproof smartphone with a good last screen display and everything as such so they started off with active since s4 is a flagship model they just launched the option yeah, yeah. Of and i think so the large screen phenomena samsung has started that they try to experiment and <laughs> if it goes they go bigger and bigger with that true so <laughs> the four inches is now a mini and 4.3 is again a mini and uh, yeah yeah we talked again. about it last uh, episode <laughs> and so guys do you think uh, this uh, out of the zoom and active which one will be launching in India? Do you think uh, both will launch or uh, what, are, what are your thoughts? I feel considering the certifications and all those things which uh, last time Sony had mentioned uh, and even Panasonic had mentioned when we asked them about the Eluga phone, why they didn't launch the, in India? They had like the issues with the government and the policies. So if oh, okay. doesn't want to go through all these things, they wouldn't launch the active model, but they would go for the Zoom. As you mentioned that it's not a smartphone, it's actually a camera which has a 
smartphone capability. So they would obviously launch the Zoom, that's S4 Zoom, and maybe not the active model. Oh. Yeah, currently S4 Zoom has no market, has no competitor as of now in India. So probably they, it's, it makes logic for Samsung as well to come up with S4 Zoom and not with X4 Active as of now. But who knows? Samsung might just come up with both of these devices in India. Right. So now let's go to the third question, which is again linked with the second question we were just discussing. So it's about the thoughts on the mega smartphones or the large screen smartphones, which are coming up from Sony, Huawei, that's the S and P one or HTC, and most of these companies are following the Samsung Galaxy Note series. So what are your thoughts on these things? Yeah, Since we have been again hearing that you know Samsung has always copied other companies, they have been copying Apple, they have been copying other manufacturers. But don't you think this time it's the other? Way like all the other companies actually copying this concept of last screens. So, what's your thought on this? Yeah, as I said in the screen department, it's Samsung that's leading the way. Every generation they increase the screen like crazy. And uh, you know what, Ranjit? It's more like uh, shoe sizes. Samsung has a phone <laughs> model in every shoe size. <laughs> you want yeah, it? They have it from what? Three point uh, no, two point eight inches yeah. all the way now up to six point three inches, and they call it a smartphone. Exactly. Yeah. So, the lines are blurring. What do we call a smartphone? What do we call a phablet? A phablet is a technical term. Uh, and I had the luck of uh, testing this uh, Galaxy 6.3 Mega. And uh, to be frank, I used the phone for about two days. And after that, I picked up my uh, S4. And S4 felt like a toy. <laughs> See, yeah, that's the effect these devices can have. Uh, the thing is, it uh, single hand operations is pretty difficult according to me and uh, I would suggest okay you can go with these uh, large size uh, phones uh, primarily if you use your device like a tablet rather than a smartphone that's my opinion right but the actual question is around uh, uh, do you think that we can accept the fact that the other companies are also following Samsung in terms of the last screen uh, category which Maybe Samsung has started I don't off. want to lose the market surprisingly the note was a hit Nobody expected anybody right. to carry a 5.5 inch uh, a phone and it was a huge hit. So I think so. I, I personally, I can't see myself carrying a 6 or a 6.3 inch phone. But again, I have other needs and that's my personal opinion. But I have seen that uh, in India, many people prefer larger phones. Yeah, th yeah, but all thanks to Samsung for it. I would uh, rather thank Samsung for it for, uh, for increasing the aspirations of the people. Previously, people, if you give a, give a person a 3.7 inch phone, he would be rather more than happy to use it. But now the things have changed. If you're giving him a 6.3 inch phone also, then also he might think. The reason behind is he wants to watch a movie, he wants to do an office work in it, he wants to play games in it. So the larger the screen, the better is the experience. That's what a consumer is feeling right now. And adding to that, these days when people opt for planning to buy a tablet, they generally ask the same question. Does it have the option of SIM cards? Can I make phone calls? And it's like, seriously, do you think you would be holding a 7 or 10 inches tablet and you use like a phone? But they still ask, the first question is like, does it support a SIM card? Yeah. yeah. I would say, uh, I would say the people have different preferences and different options, right? Right now, it is very much affordable for any person to go out there and buy a tablet or a phablet as per their own preference. If they are okay with the screen size, if they want a bigger screen size, and if they are okay to use it uh, by holding a tablet onto their ears and they don't mind it all the way, right? So they can always go for it. Now, the problem is people perceive not only these devices as phone and a tablet, but also they perceive them as portable computing devices some of the times, okay? So if they have a 7-inch tablet, which they can actually use at a home, uh, they can use it uh, for doing a simple kind of tasks, for example, browsing web or doing anything related to not heavy-end computing, but basic kind of computing. If they can do that, they are good to go. They are happy to use it. They don't have any problem. So this is the main point which I would like to highlight, that is that people don't only perceive these devices as phones, as tablets, but they perceive them as portable computing devices as well. So yeah. that is why maybe they are liking the bigger screen size. And again, because of the overall industry change, which we have seen from the last year, we have, we see a large number of tablets and tablets are getting launched. So all these devices have become much more affordable. So it's affordable to anyone out there to buy a device like this and use it for their own purpose. 
Yeah, I mean companies like Spice is coming up with sub 10,000 rupees five inch smartphone. That clearly says that uh, there will be many more manufacturers will be coming up with larger schemes with good price points. Yeah, Pradeep, I feel five inches is okay as a phone. It can perfectly fit in your pocket or whatever. But try doing that with your 6.3, and uh, it does. It did fit in my jeans pocket, but it was uncomfortable. So I am like just looking. What do you call a phone? Where do you stop calling a device a phone, and it becomes a different uh, thing like a tablet or whatever? That is actually a question to debate. <laughs> uh, like personally, I would like to say that any phone for me which goes above 4.3. Is okay. a tablet, or I would assume that a Note 2, which I'm carrying these days, I carry Note 2 whenever I'm going for a trip or anywhere. I carry Note 2, considering it as a tablet or a tablet basically. I don't put the SIM card in that. I use my iPhone 5 for primary calling and anything. When it comes to entertainment, watching movies, I'm happy with that particular form factor because I can carry it in my jean pocket. If I actually have to carry a uh, tablet like X7, like this device. So if I carry this, it is actually very difficult to carry this when you don't have a bag or anything like that. Uh, you can't put this device into your jean pocket. It is very difficult to fit into the jean pocket sometimes. So yeah. I would say uh, five inch or above, maybe up to five point five inch. Uh, it is a kind of a device which you can use as a phone as well as as a tablet. So yeah, I think the sure. solution would be, you know, the solution would be coming up in the next few years when uh, companies would actually come up with the flexible display and the expandable display, where you just hold the phone and expand the display and use it as a tablet. Till then, we keep debating around these products, what are we have in the market right now? Or so, is the issue can be resolved with uh, Samsung tying up with Pantaloons or Shopper Stop to come out with the clothes which are having bigger pockets? For accommodating this. Okay. Yeah, we can debate our next 20 okay. minutes again. Let's again, let's, again, let's, take, a let's take a vote. Look, okay, let's go with yeah. Samsung Mega 6.3. Amit, are you going to buy it and use it regularly like your uh, phone or not? No, I would never do that because for me, 5.5 inches is the max. I would go ahead. With, apart from that, like if you go for 5.8 or 6.3, it actually looks awkward when you are actually receiving call. It's more like you are holding a small tablet and you are actually using the same for phone call. So that is something I would never go for. And right now, I feel the five inches is something which is pretty good for me. Abhishek, I would go for the Note 2, which I have. I will always use this as a tablet. I'm so, I'm happy with this much of screen size. I don't want to go beyond that. Okay, Pradeep, what do you think? I guess 4.7 to 5 inches is pretty much good. So, so Mega 6.3 is no no for you, huh? No. <laughs> Yeah, I would. Uh, you know, I would be happy if Samsung would come up with the Galaxy Beam smartphone again, a newer version uh, of that. Yeah, projector yeah. and all those things. Yeah. yeah. The Note 2, so that whenever I want to expand the display, let's say I want to show my kids some movie or some video or some yeah. cartoon, let's say, I can just start off the projector here. But the, sadly, I have actually got the Beam smartphone, and it never got a firmware update. It was always stuck at two point two point six. And Samsung had never worked on even bringing out a newer model of that. Yeah, so, it's surprising. I thought that the Beam would do great because it was a novel concept, new thing. But sadly, it tanked down. Exactly. <laughs> uh, probably because of maybe like lower number of sales and uh, very less uh, demand from the market, they couldn't work on it. But again, it was a very good category, which yeah. and I was actually impressed with the result of the project. It was like a very good output. Pretty so nice, it was. Yeah. Samsung should still reconsider by bringing that projector feature along with the. Zoom feature and everything merged into one smartphone. Maybe like S5. Who knows? <laughs> What do you guys think about the Huawei S10 Mate? How do you like it? Uh, uh, we actually had done a comparison at the CES event or maybe like Mobile World Congress, where I don't even remember the exact event. And we actually found that they almost look similar. But first thing is the Huawei's UI, which actually looks crazy. It's hard to even figure out what applications you are on. And the second part is the form factor. It was having a lot, lot bezel and a lot of useless space on the device, and it makes it look larger. So that is something which Huawei should be actually working on. And the second thing is even after Huawei launching or even unveiling a lot of products, they have never been bringing them to the consumers. So like they should actually be launching those products in India and uh, do a lot of campaigns, and that is when they could get success. Without that, it's always like Samsung and uh, HTC or Sony taking the market share. Yeah, I guess Huawei should capitalize its third largest position across the globe. And like uh, yesterday, I was reading somewhere that Huawei is the third largest manufacturer of smartphones. And I guess Huawei should work upon on coming up. 
in india i think so they ignore it uh, yeah. i asked a lot of shopkeepers they don't keep huawei stocks i don't know they are not that aggressive in india there's a common notion across when it comes to huawei that there's a chinese, the chinese uh, got it got it yeah. probably they should come up with some image transformation campaign in india but huawei in it equipment uh, they do very good and their it devices like modems and all those data cards are excellent right so now let's uh, go to the next topic which is uh, a topic which i am not much familiar with because i don't play games so this is a topic around uh, your thoughts on the xbox one that's a microsoft xbox one and the playstation 4 which one would you offer and what are your thoughts around this new gaming consoles uh i uh, actually have both uh, currently the xbox 360 as well as the ps3 uh but for the next generation microsoft has come up with xbox one and uh, playstation ps4 personally i would go with the ps4 just because uh, microsoft is focusing xbox one first as a media centric device and only in the second part they are catering to the gamer when i want to buy a gaming console the first thing should be gaming yes i know microsoft yeah. has recently backtracked and now they are allowing used games or something like that but that was just due to peer pressure i don't like the fact that and i don't like the company policy hence for me ps4 still i think so their focus first is on gamers that's why i might personally go with the ps4 so when they announced the xbox one i think there were some points noted out that uh, you cannot play with your current games you actually have to buy new games you always have to be online online yeah uh, issues have actually been fixed after the public pressure or you can say the pressure yeah just two days ago they gamers. made a statement yeah right so even after making those changes and to the policies do you still think that microsoft the uh, xbox one is something which you won't offer i would not personally or because see uh, for me they did this only due to peer pressure it was not the company's original policy so that uh, gives me a perception of the thinking of the company okay and the second thing is that uh, you guys know it or not xbox one do uh, does come with connect and that connect is always on you can't switch it off no ranjit see this point here see uh, the ps4 doesn't come with the technology like connect Sure. That is something which you need to make a note of. And but second, hundred dollars. Uh, uh, we have that uh, PlayStation. Uh, I think it's motion sensing uh, technology. But so I don't think it's as smart as the new Kinect, which is coming up, which tracks everything, literally, literally yeah. everything which you do, you know, the body movements and everything. It has like hundreds yeah. of sensors around that. So, but you know, one thing is privacy issue is uh, I don't know, Amit, you know this or, or not? You cannot shut off that Kinect in the Xbox One. It's always on. and after this nsa scandal and all those things i don't want a thing to track me always okay you know, always switch off the unit so you don't have to worry about no, the privacy the xbox doesn't work that's the thing and all thanks to prism who knows it might surveil <laughs> surveil in your home but see Arindhi, you have a point saying that uh, because microsoft was under pressure and they have changed the policies end of the day you are a consumer you are a person you are a gamer who wants to own a very good gaming console so for you you shouldn't be looking into the option like you know company has come under pressure and made the changes end of the day what matters you is what is beneficial to you so in that case don't you think xbox one is uh, superior in terms of the features it's going to offer you yes because for a simple reason if you take if you compare xbox one with playstation 4 the xbox one not only offers gaming but apart from that it offers many other things which uh, sony playstation doesn't offer for a simple example you have got uh, the live tv access which you can actually do it since xbox one is a media media centric device you can actually watch your live television channels and also you can play games and also after the recent uh, applaud of uh, many people across the different board these people have allowed the offline gaming and also people can now share offline games with the xbox one and that is not possible as of now on playstation So yes, if I'm a user, if I'm seeing a value in it, the extra hundred dollar which is being charged by Microsoft, if I'm making use of it, so it's value for money. Because every time I can't be sitting and playing games. Pratik, Pratik, uh, uh, what features you are talking about? Uh, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but yeah. half of these features, this live TV etc., won't work in India. And yeah. I don't know if uh, you know that or not. Uh, PS4 player, Sony has committed that. Uh, they launched the PS4 very quickly in 2014. Yes. But uh, according to what reports I'm getting, Microsoft is not very keen to launch the Xbox One in India, and it's been rumored that it's going to be launched late By in 2014. Yeah. Yes. So 
see, their focus of Microsoft after all this rubbish also is first about media, about this. I am buying a gaming console, gaming yeah. console, and that should be my priority. What is it? it has to be best in the gaming and then probably you can think something else up beyond that. It's like your smartphone, you have 20,000 features, you have Samsung. Yeah. How many of them do you use? How many do you use? Yeah, that's, that's again a big question. So yes, end of the day we can conclude that you are actually going for the PS4 and not for the One. Yeah. At least until it comes up early, actually is available to the users months ahead before the PS4 launches, comes with a better pricing when compared to the current pricing of $500 and also comes with some better features probably. Mm -hmm. So now let's go to the next section which is about the user comments and the user questions. So the first question we have here is from a user called Techno Buzzing. He has a question which says that which one, which smartphone do you recommend? The Galaxy S3 or the Nexus 4? Now what do you think about this question? <coughs> I feel that both of these smartphones have a similar price as of now earlier. Yeah, yeah, very close to each other. Yeah. difference yeah. in the pricing earlier. Now, right now, the Nexus 4 has been recently launched and it's available at around 25,000 if I'm not wrong. Yeah, and the S4 is around 22,000. S3, S3, yeah. S3, mm -hmm. sorry. S3 is around 22,000 rupees. So, you almost have a similar pricing. No, uh, you always say S3 is at 22, but when I check my sources, it's around 26. <laughs> <laughs> I probably get a better deal. Let's, let's forget. Let's it. It's that. the same pricing. Let's continue <laughs> that way. Okay. So I think that both of them come with the same pricing. Which one would you offer? Uh, so here, the one who is interested in a simple Google experience, not into a mixed kind of a touch user interface, who doesn't like it, probably you can go with Nexus 4. And who is the person who is not? I'm like not want to listen to FM radio. Probably he, he is the one who will be choosing Nexus 4 because SC comes with advanced features. And some other features. It's a Nexus 4 is a vanilla featured phone, while S3 comes with the featured phone. So it comes with a hell lot of new features. So I guess I would rather prefer S3 rather than Nexus 4. Uh, That's right. If someone wants the original Nexus features, the then they can obviously go for Nexus 4. But again, you need to also make a note that we had done, done some test around the temperature because it comes with the Qualcomm processor. It has a lot of heating issues because it has a glass panel on the back and the front. So you need to always make a note that this device actually has the heating issues while the Galaxy S3 doesn't have that. But again, also, I'm not supporting I'm Samsung. Remember, the battery life on Nexus 4 is not that great compared to yeah. other phones. Right. S3 and it has a like much better battery life. Ranjit, I would also like to add that, you know, I, I'm not supporting S3 here because, again, if you compare yes. the uh, UI, I would say that the TouchWiz looks crap when compared to the original UI which you get on the Nexus smartphone. Then when you're talking about the overall features and everything, S3 is better, but considering these heating issues and the glass back panel, oh. you also need to make a note that it can easily break off. And I have seen many people pushing on the Google Plus community saying like they have lost yeah. this smartphone yeah. because of the simple drops and uh, losing the back panels. I, I agree. I, and I, 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 yeah, Abhishek. Yeah, Abhishek. Yeah. Uh, I would say that S3, when it comes to the overall performance which you will get, and if you compare the same with a Nexus 4 as of now, now there are two things associated with it. Uh, one is the hardware, second is the software. So you will definitely get a better software experience on a Nexus 4, again because it is running stock Android. So which is actually most liked these days by users when it comes to the software experience we talk about. When it comes to TouchWiz UI, you will get some good features which are a part of TouchWiz UI, but some people don't like it. Again, when it comes to the hardware, I do see that Samsung Galaxy S3 is much more stable when it comes to handling certain games and application, and I have tested both of these devices. I would say that uh, S3 was pretty good, but when it comes to gaming, I saw that the gaming performance on Nexus 4 was actually very good. Now when it comes to the camera again, camera, I do not like the camera on Nexus 4 at all. It is very bad when it comes to low light. On S3 it is again quite average, not the very best. So these are the points I would like to make. And again, the decision is based on the hardware or, and software. So software is actually a better experience which you, you will get on Nexus 4. When it comes to the hardware, both of the, these phones are equally good in terms of the overall hardware and the performance. Yeah, the Nexus 4 is technically a much powerful phone than the S3. 
but uh, as all of you have highlighted it has some serious issues like uh, gaming yes it's better but it overheats like crazy battery life is bad but uh, if you are a person who is inclined towards getting the latest android updates then yeah, nexus, nexus 4 is, is the way to go yeah because probably s3 will get the next major android update uh, android 5 or whatever key lime pie uh, and after that i don't think so s3 will get it because the hardware on that won't be uh, powerful enough but nexus might get even the next update yeah because it comes with a 2 gb ram yeah yep so or we can conclude that uh, you can go for the nexus 4 if you are looking for the better software and uh, different enhancements but if you are looking for a smartphone which can handle drops then you can obviously go for galaxy s3 s3 more practical in indian conditions i would say <laughs> yeah seriously s3 here probably a unanimous choice will be there <laughs> by most of them so now let's go to the next question that's a final question from user users and it's from rajiv mathur who has a question he says that i have a question which says that uh, the htc 1x plus and the samsung galaxy s3 which one should i go for and again i did a quick check on the pricing and uh, again it's <laughs> same close. again it's close <laughs> close enough i would say yeah, it's the same pricing in the markets both are available at around 25 to 26000 rupees okay. depends on the dealer so what do you think which, which one is a better smartphone i would say that the htc 1x plus was launched around the end of last year while the s3 was launched in the summer last year so this was this one is the latest device again it comes with uh, better ppi that's uh, better resolution So that is something you need to make yeah, a note of. So both are 720p panels. Uh, 720 by 1280p. But again, you know that is difference in the screen the size. Size, uh, size, yeah, screen it's size. Very small difference, in fact. So the S3 is of 4.8 inches, while the One X Plus is 4.7 inches. So okay. that gives us a little bit advantage, like the. That's neutral, I would say. That's neutral. Exactly. Yeah, both are like 4.7 and 4.8 versus 3.06. the biggest thing i think so is the internal storage between both uh, this s3 is 16 gb and uh, x plus is i guess 64 32 it starts with 32 so that is something which is very important because the internal storage is generally faster so mm-hmm. obviously the user is always at benefit if they go for the one x plus but and i think so x plus does not have a micro sd slot so yeah that is something which we need to check actually because i don't yeah, i don't think so it has it because i did review it uh, thing uh, actually i couldn't test the one x plus a lot but i did uh, test the one x a lot and the problem with one x was that again the heating issue in indian conditions that was one big issue with the one x that's why i didn't recommend it so i don't know if htc would have solved that in x plus but it used to get uh, hot pretty quickly just about 7 8 minutes of usage outdoors So that's what what do you think about the display the s3 comes with super amoled display while the s3 plus comes with lcd 2 yeah amoled yeah. again it's the age old thing you love some people love the super amoled some yeah. are the purest who love the lcd type so it's a debatable thing so <laughs> <laughs> i've got used to this uh, super amoled i prefer the amoleds yeah seriously so, uh, did the galaxy s3 get the official jelly bean update since you own the s3 right now Yeah, yeah jelly bean but it's not 4.2 it's on 4.1 as of now okay because the uh, one x plus comes with 4.1 out of the box we have 4.1 on s3 also 4.2 yeah. is going to come very soon on s3 yeah again when it comes to one x plus as of now uh, if you actually compare it with s3 in my opinion uh, s3 is much better and why i am saying that again because of the heating issues again because of the old sense ui which is actually running on one x plus which i find very irritating in terms of overall usage i do not like that ui uh, which is actually running on top of android it would be great if they actually provide a stock kind of a version of uh, android on that device if that is possible for them i don't know whether they will do it or not mm. now when it comes to the s3 you will get a lot of recommendation even from the users who are using this device for a long time okay and when it comes to one x you will not see like i will not i haven't seen any user recommending a one x again to anyone else but i have seen many people recommending an s3 to another people so again s3 is a much tested device much like device very good in terms of the overall stability if i talk about it is a very stable device it will not heat like anything like one x or one x plus i'm not sure whether the one x plus heats the same way the one x was actually so i would say s3 is a better choice in this case Yeah, truly. And all we have also noticed generally that HTC is a bit slow with the Android updates. Samsung is a little bit more aggressive. Right. 
uh, probably you know the, the numbers also count the mm -hmm. huge pressure from the users <laughs> yeah. so now let's end up this session with the, the section 2 of the user com for comments and the questions now let's enter the final round which is the section 3 where i would be asking you some random questions which would be based on your current usage and what all i know about you guys so the first question is to ranjit and i hope you answer this question within a few seconds okay. so ranjit what would you buy actually a ps4 or xbox one PS4 because I don't like the policies on Microsoft. <laughs> <laughs> and the next question is to Abhishek. Let's say you are gifted a smartphone. Which one would you like to get gifted? I would like to get an S4 uh, because of the innovative features which I see in it, and because of the sunlight outdoor visibility of the device, which I like it. The S4 Active, the S4 Zoom, or the default S4 which you are getting in India? The default S4 which I am getting here in India. Okay, so Samsung should be listening that. Now the next question to Pradeep. Uh, Pradeep, uh, you seem to be using a lot of media consumption devices. So, yeah. which one would you opt for, the Apple like Apple TV or the SS Cube, which is the recently launched Google TV? So, I guess here again a mixed reaction will be there. But my personal choice will be rather than to select Apple TV. But yes, if someone is someone wants to use a media centric device in India, then probably he should go with Asus Cube due to its openness and being but, an Android OS, of course. Sure. So. Thanks everyone for watching this session and this episode of the weekly tech report. Stay tuned on both of our channels. That's youtube.com slash geekiranjit and youtube.com slash advice media. And uh, we would be coming up with more episodes every week at Friday, 5 o'clock. And if you have any questions, ensure that you come up live at that time and post your questions in the comment section of the YouTube videos. And we'll keep you updated with more. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Bye, guys. Bye, guys. Bye, guys. Bye, guys.